And good evening, everyone. I'm Grant DeBruin. At least 600 people have died and more than 2,000 injured in Israel, the country launching massive retaliatory strikes on Gaza as the nation's Security Council declares war. ABC's Inez de la Quitara has the latest. The intense fighting now in its second day. The Israeli military continuing its airstrikes against Gaza in response to Saturday's surprise attack by Hamas militants. We've struck quite a lot of Hamas's military targets in Gaza already, and we are preparing to expand that military activity and strike further. This video shows Israel targeting Palestinian militants at the Israel-Gaza border fence. Israel's Security Council declaring war for the first time since the 1973 Yom Kippur War. But there's a fundamental difference. That was a war uh, that was state to state, country to country, army to army. This is a massive terrorist attack that is gunning down Israeli civilians in their towns, in their homes, and as we've seen so graphically, literally dragging people across the, the border with Gaza. Yanni Asher says this video shows his wife and his daughters being taken hostage. The Israeli government confirming at least 100 Israeli citizens and soldiers are being held hostage in Gaza. Prime Minister Netanyahu saying the first stage is ending by the destruction of the vast majority of the enemy forces that infiltrated our territory. President Biden speaking with Netanyahu on Sunday, informing him additional assistance for the Israeli Defense Forces was already on its way, with more to follow in the coming days. The United States stands with Israel. We'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need and they can continue to defend themselves. And now questions over intelligence failures that may have left Israel blindsided by this attack. The 73 war was the only other war that, where they had this sort of failure. <laughs> This is Hamas, and Hamas working in small groups using personal encrypted communications, infiltrating each, uh, into Israel. So very different kind of failure, but a failure that is inexcusable nonetheless. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Tel Aviv. And a short time ago, I spoke with Professor Osama Khalil, chair of the International Relations Undergraduate Program and professor of history at Syracuse University's Maxwell School. I asked him about de-escalating the crisis and who Israel needs to be in communication with. Often when they want to get a message to Hamas, they will go directly through Egypt or to Qatar. Uh, that's, those are the phone lines that need to be burning up and are burning up right now mm -hmm. and, and have been for some time. So what the goal now is, okay, how do we de-escalate this situation? The problem is for Hamas, Hamas has been party to multiple ceasefire agreements that take us all the way back to 2008. From their perspective, Israel's never lived up to those ceasefire agreements.